Have you ever wanted to create a completely detailed 3D model of something before actually building it in the real world? This can be very beneficial because otherwise you might buy the wrong materials or you might put stuff in place the wrong way. But if you can build something completely in 3D, then you can avoid those mistakes and know exactly how you're going to put something together. So in this series, we're going to start by creating a 3D model of a shed. I'll talk you through all the different details and then in future videos, we'll talk about some different things we can do with that model. Now, let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing I like to do is I like to block out the size of my shed. So I'm going to say it's going to be 24 feet long by 12 feet wide, and I'm just drawing lines to those dimensions like this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this a group just so nothing is merging on it. Now, there's two ways that we could look at this. So first is we could assume this is going to be something that's going to be on grade, which would just be a two by six around the outside and then concrete on the inside of this. Or what we could do instead, and what I'm going to do, is I'm going to model this out um, basically up on little foundation pieces or pads. And so I'm going to go ahead and model these out um, as the parts and pieces that I want them to be. So I'm just going to model this up and I'm going to say that this is going to be one and a half. So I'm just going to draw a line up. I'm going to say this is going to be five and a half inches. I'm going to say this is going to be an inch and a half wide. So basically the dimensions of a two by six like this. And I'm just going to push pull it the entire length right here. I'm not going to get so granular that I break this up into multiple pieces, um, even though you probably would need to do like two two by tens or something like that. But I'm just going to triple click on this. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make this a group and I'm just going to call it two by six. Now you could label this based on the pieces that you want. I'm not going to worry about that for right now. Okay. And so then I'm going to assume that I'm going to have one of these in the middle of my shed. So I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode in order to create a copy right here. And then I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode again in order to create a copy over here. And I will try to remember to link to a video about the move tool in copy mode in the notes down below. But then I'm going to model out another two by six right here. And we're just going to push pull that across like this. I'm just going to triple click on that. And I'm going to go ahead for that one. I'm going to make a component and we're going to call this two by six floor short. And I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode again to create a copy right here. Then we're going to assume that these are going to happen probably we're going to call it 16 inches on center. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode again with these two selected. And I'm just going to copy this at 16 inches. So I'm going to hit the enter key and then I'm going to type times and the number of copies I want. So in this case, maybe like 15 or times 18 right here. And so again, I will link to a video about that in the notes down below. But what we want to do now is we want to make sure that this, these last boards are aligned with the end right here. So now what I've got is I've got the base part of my floor framing. However, we're probably going to want concrete foundations in here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my floor plane. I'm going to select this entire base. I'm going to make it a group. And again, to stay organized, I'm just going to call this floor framing. And so my assumption here is this is going to sit on some four by fours or maybe six by sixes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make these four by fours. So I'm just going to make this three and a half by three and a half. And then we'll just extrude this across. I'm just going to triple click on it. I'm going to make it a whoops. I'm going to make it a component and we're going to call this four by four sleeper. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to assume I'm going to have four of these. You might get away with three of them, but I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy over here. And then I'm going to type in divided by and three. So what that's going to do is that's going to create three copies equally spaced between this point and this point. And then we're just going to take those and we're going to put them in a group. And we're just going to call this sleepers right here. 
And then let's say we're just going to have some little like pier pads on here. So I'm just going to model out something that's kind of close. So I'm going to model this over. And then I'm actually going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to tap the control key to draw this from the center. I'm going to tap the up arrow key in order to, to lock this to the blue axis. But then I'm going to assume that those are maybe like 12 inches by 12 inches. So I'm just going to draw 12 comma 12, hit the enter key. And then I will push pull that down like this. And then probably I'll just use the scale tool to scale them in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this up real quick. And I'll move it up like, we'll call it three inches. I'm going to move it over so that it's fully intersected with this board. But then I'm just going to triple click on it, right click, and do an intersect faces with model. And then I'm going to move this back out. Notice what that did is that went in and that intersected all of the faces that I have in here with this board. Well then, I'm just going to draw some edges across here to fill in a face. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this good. Like in reality, maybe there might be a little bit more to this, but I'm not really worried about it for what we're doing in this video. So I'm just going to triple click. I'm going to make this a component. And we're going to call this peer pen. Move this over. So it's aligned with this point. And then I don't know what the spacing is on this. I think we're just going to say maybe like 24 inches on center again. So we'll use the move tool in copy mode to go ahead and copy this. Like this. And then we'll select all of them and you can select them in the outliner. Or we're just gonna use the move tool in copy mode again to create copies across my shed like this. So then I can type in times three and hit the enter key. Well then I'm just gonna take all these pier pads. I'm gonna put them in a group like this. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our layer of plywood over the floor. So for that, all you have to do is just use the rectangle tool like this, whoops, and just draw a rectangle over this face. I'm gonna push pull it up to a thickness of three quarters of an inch. And then we'll just triple click on that. We'll right click and we'll just call this plywood floor. So now we've got that done and we can start working on our framing. So to do our framing, we can assume that we're gonna have a base plate that goes around the outside of our shed. And I think I've got way too many pier pads in here, but that's okay for this video. So what we wanna do is I'm assuming that we're actually going to have like a, we're gonna call it a six foot porch on this. So that means that I'm going to draw a two by six like this. And again, we'll say it's five and a half inches tall by two and a half inches wide. And so what that means is that means that we need to draw a bottom plate that we're gonna frame on top of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line up and we're gonna draw a line an inch and a half up by five and a half inches wide. And then we're gonna push pull this across, but notice how we don't have a guide in here yet. So we wanna add a guide using the tape measure tool so we know where this is going to stop. So if I have a six foot porch, then my base plate needs to stop right here. So we're gonna push pull this across to this point right here. I'm gonna triple click on this and I'm gonna make this a component and I'm gonna call it a two by six base plate. We're just gonna make a copy of that over here using the move tool. And so now we've got our base plates together and what we can do is we can start framing out the rest of our building. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start by modeling out this sidewall. So again, I'm just going to rough out the dimensions of my two by six, so one and a half by five and a half. And then I'm just going to push pull this up to whatever the height that I want the inside of my shed to be. So if we want this to be eight foot high on the sidewalls, we're just gonna type in a value of eight feet right here. And then we're just gonna triple click, make this a component. And we're gonna call this two by six wall framing. And then we can assume that this is going to be framed out at something like 
16 inches on center or 24 inches on center. So I'm gonna do it 16, but then I'm also going to add an extra board right here. So it's kind of like a box on the corner. You don't have to do that, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode again to create a copy over here like this. So then now we know that we want these to be 16 inches on center. So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy at 16 inches. And then we'll type in times and the number of copies we wanna create. So in this case, I typed in a value of 12 and that actually worked out nicely. All right, so we'll get back to the framing in a second. I did wanna take a second and encourage you to check out the SketchUp Essentials course. So if you wanna learn how to use SketchUp, the course is my step-by-step, -step, easy to follow resource for doing that. So we've got in-depth comprehensive training that's gonna teach you from start to finish how to use the program, as well as a community forum where you can interact with other students and ask questions, as well as our live calls where you can actually come get help with SketchUp live. Um, you can ask your questions live and we make sure that you don't get stuck. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love to see you in the course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and get back to it. All right, and so let's go ahead and let's block out a window on these walls. So I'm assuming maybe like four feet into this building, I want a window on this sidewall. So I'm gonna create a dimension over here that's four feet from the middle and we're assuming that we're gonna have a window that starts right here. So in this situation, what we wanna do is we're just gonna add in some, we're gonna add in some framing. And I'm assuming that this window is maybe gonna be like two and a half feet wide. So I'm just going to draw another dimension off of this one at two and a half feet. But what we need to do is we need to come in here and we need to model out the framing for this location, right? So the way that we're gonna do that is I'm gonna start by just drawing two by sixes that run all the way up over here. And we're assuming that those are gonna go outward from that location. So we'll draw a two by six right here. And then I'm gonna make a copy of that. I'm gonna create another two by six over here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm assuming this outside one is gonna go all the way up right here. And then I'm assuming the inside one is going to support the framing that goes across the opening. So that's gonna support the header. And so in this case, I'm assuming that the window is going to have a base that's maybe like 24 inches off the ground. And then I'm assuming that it's maybe gonna be four feet tall. So I'm gonna draw another dimension right here. So I'm just gonna draw a four foot dimension off of this line like this. So now I can see where my window is going to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and group this. So I'm just gonna double click on it and make it a group. And then I can double click in here. I just don't want it to merge with the geometry that's over there. But I'm gonna push pull that up to the height of this right here. I'm gonna make sure that I've grouped this as well. And then I'm gonna take both of these. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy over here. And then I'm just gonna use the scale tool by tapping the S key. I'm gonna hold control or, and I'm gonna scale this to negative one. So when I scale this to negative one, what that's gonna do is that's gonna flip this in place right here. So then I can go ahead and I can delete out these pieces of framing and we're going to model out the header. So I'm assuming this is gonna be maybe like three two by sixes in here. So I'm gonna do a one and a half right here. And then I'm gonna make this a component and we're just gonna call this two by six window header. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. I'm gonna create two copies of that right here. So we're assuming that's just gonna sit on this board right here. And then at the bottom, we just need to model out our sill. So we're just gonna find the middle point between these two edges. And so I'm just gonna draw a quick line in here so that I have a midpoint to draw from. And then I'll just draw a two by six. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to draw this over here out of my way. And then I'll just take the whole thing, I'll put it in a group We'll call this a two by six 
I'm not sure what the technical word for this one is, so we'll just call it sill support. And I'm just gonna move it over here. I'll double click in it and I'll push pull it up to the base right here, but we're gonna push pull it up to the base and then we're gonna push pull it back down by an inch and a half, right? So 1.5 because we're going to have a sill piece in here. So I'm just gonna draw that out real quick and then we'll push pull it up so that it aligns right here. We'll erase out this extra. We'll call this two by six window sill. So now we have the framing in here for our window. And so we do need to put another two by six up here in the middle. So what I might do in this case, so I don't have to remodel everything is I might just copy this one up. But remember that it's a component. And so I didn't model this one as a component. So I can just rename this two by six cripple stud. And then I can push pull that down so that it aligns right here. So now I've got my window framed in this opening. And so you could just take all of this and put it all in a component. So we're just gonna do a make component and we're just gonna call this window opening framing. And you could put this wherever you want a window. So let's say you wanted another window over here. We're just going to create a copy in here, wherever you want that window to be. So maybe like right here, then you can just erase out the tall studs in that location. Just making sure that everything is at least um, 16 inches on center still. And then we can just take this whole sidewall assembly like this. And we can make a copy of it over here using the move tool in copy mode. So now we've got studs on these two sides and then we just need to frame out the back wall. And so for that, we could just create a copy of this right here, then use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy over here. And then we could just take all of those and copy them to the front, just like this. And so we would do the same thing for the front door, which I'm just gonna go ahead and model out. I'm not gonna talk through really fast in this case. I'm just gonna model it real quick. So you just basically do what you did at the window, but with door framing. All right, so then we could take the framing that's around the outside, select it and copy it up. And so notice how I'm trying to reuse framing as much as I can. So I'm trying not to redraw anything that I already have. We can go ahead and assume it's gonna have a double top plate on it. So we've got the framing in here like this. So now we just need to add our roof. All right, so this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm gonna break it up here. In the next video, we'll talk about framing out your roof and adding that detail. And if you wanna download the example files from this series, I will put that link on this page as well as a link to the course in case you wanna learn SketchUp more in depth. If you have any questions about anything we did, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.